اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و الصلاة و السلام علی سیدنا و نبینا و طبیب نفوسنا و حبیب قلوبنا ابل قاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لمقدمه الفداء Respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله The second last uh, Thursday evening of the month of Sha'ban al-Mu'azzam, the glorified month of uh, Sha'ban, named as the month of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, get started, inshallah, slowly but surely in preparation for the holy month of Ramadan, being Thursday evening, the night of mercy and forgiveness, to, inshallah, in few minutes' time, uh, sit around the tablecloth, the heavenly tablecloth of the Al-Kumail. Inshallah, tonight we want to reflect on a few words of the du'a uh, towards the end of the du'a, the last kind of uh, paragraph of the du'a. But uh, the program tonight, inshallah, is a dedication to all marhumin, especially marhum uh, Ghulam Muhammad Behbahani, whose second anniversary coincides with uh, today, tonight, tomorrow. So inshallah, for the pleasure of his soul and the soul of all marhumin, let us begin with the citation of Surah Al-Fatiha. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina as-sarata al-mustaqim. Sarata al-ladhina an'amta alayhim. Ghayr al-maghdub alayhim. Walad-dalim. یا من اسمه دوا و ذکره شفا This is the part that we want to reflect on it a little bit as this limited time allows me Towards the end of the Akumel you remember we read you are very familiar with this دعا یا من اسمه دوا و ذکره شفا O oh, you the one whose name اسمه دوا His name is medication و ذکره شفا And remembering him is healing is the cure this brings a question, and especially a very relevant question for these days that we are combating this COVID-19, that to combat, to treat uh, someone who tested positive with uh, COVID-19, do they need uh, uh, medication only? Do they need to follow the uh, advice recommendations of the health workers in terms of medications needed, quarantine, self-isolation, watch your diet, certain type of diet, do certain exercises, and all these health-related recommendations. Are these enough? Or do I need to add to that supplications, invocations, prayer, dua, and certain adhkar, and things like that as well? So the, the topic is about kind of paradox between dua and dawa, between medication and supplication, however you want to refer to it. Logically, four answers could be given to this question. One is to turn around and say that, no, this is a physical illness, and therefore needs only physical treatment. As far as you follow the recommendations of the uh, med medicine, that should suffice. If you are meant to recover, you recover. If you are not meant to recover, you won't, no matter what. So only you need dawa, and by dawa, I mean here, the physical dawa, medication, as you are familiar with the medication, taking certain uh, recommendations or, or medications. T to prove that, they say that, look, so many uh, uh, people, they, uh, they die uh, of COVID-19, or so many, or some at least, in some Muslim countries, and maybe holy cities like the holy city of Rom, they died. We had Ayatollah Rahmatullah passed away. They were very religious. They must have prayed. Their family must have prayed. And yet they died. At the same time, we have absolute atheists that they had no faith in God, let alone pray to God. And they were recovered. 
So this has got nothing to do with religion, my friend. It has nothing to do with supplication, invocations, and things like that. It's a physical issue, needs physical treatment, simple as this. And that's why recently, like, uh, there was an interview of one of the uh, American ladies. She was saying that in America, if you're a celebrity, or if you're rich, or you, you're part of the elite, that you can access the test in earlier stages, then there is a chance for your treatment. Otherwise, no matter who you are, religious or not religious, is not an issue. We lay men, lay women, we are not going to, uh, uh, to, to receive the same treatment. So, the first answer, by the way, is that you only need medication, nothing else. This is the first uh, 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 approach. The second approach is that now you need supplication, and you only need supplication. The Almighty God says, you, you say du'a kumil. What are you saying when you are doing du'a kumil? At least for you believers. You say, Esmuhu dawa, the name of God is the medication. Not that God's name is, is medication. The name, mentioning the name of God medicates and treats. And remembering of God, it, it cures and heals. Call me, I grant you. Did God say call me only for paradise? It's uh, unconditional. Anything you need. The Rawayat says, the, the Almighty God says to Moses, even the salt of your food, ask me and I grant you. Okay? So, uh, the second opinion is that they say, supplication suffices, if you are meant to, to recover or not recover. And then they mention some examples as well, that we know examples. And even in the medical field, medical doctors, the older they are, the, the more experiences they have experienced in their life, that what they refer to it as miracle. Patients that they were diagnosed with fatal disease and medicine that had no treatment for them, all of a sudden, miraculously, they were recovered by the supplications at the door of the patient or the, the relatives of the, of the patient. I have lived long enough myself by the grace of God to have experienced numbers of such experiences. I mentioned one of them, Sheikh Abbas Qumi, you're familiar uh, with him and his book, Mafatih al Janan. Due to his sincerity, this book, mashallah, worldwide, uh, the, the lovers of Ahlul Bayt and Muslim are familiar with this book and benefit from this book. His son, Sheikh Ali, says that once my dad was sick and feverish, so I took some tablet, I, I, I think I say that maybe something that has some paracetamol in it, with a glass of water, I took it to my dad's study room. My dad was a very hard worker day and night. Couple of hours later, I went to check on dad, and I noticed that he's sitting back at his uh, uh, like chair table, however, that he was working, writing, and he seems fine. I said, dad, are you okay? He says, yes, alhamdulillah, I'm fine. But I noticed that the, the tablet, the pill is there. The glass of water, he had drank it, but the tablet is there. I said, dad, did you take the, tab the tablet? He said, no, no, son, there was no need for it. I said, what do you mean there was no need for it? And I checked, there is no fever. And Sheikh Abbas Qomi turns around and tells to his son, according to his son's uh, testimony, narration, that my dad told me that I, like, grabbed the, the tablet to take it, but then I put it down, and I said to myself, and I said, Yara, my hand, for the last 50 years of my life, has been serving, inshallah, Islam, has been writing the heritage of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi Surely the same God who has given the treatment and cure to that tablet can give it to my finger as well. With this, I said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, immersed my finger into the glass of water and drank the glass of water. Alhamdulillah, the fever disappeared. No need for that tablet. And many such examples. I personally, because of this uh, COVID-19, I have examples of friends that I recommended to them recitation of Surah Al-Ham seven times or 70 times. By the grace of God, to their testimony, they say that they are they are recovered. So they say you need supplication. That supplication is enough. Question comes, does supplication always work 100% that you are for the second opinion? From this, we want to come to the third opinion. By the way, to complete all these four possibilities, the fourth opinion possibly is that you don't need supplication, you don't need medication. I don't think anyone with a sound mind has this opinion. So usually it's either supplication or medication or both of them that we want to incline towards the third one. So 
The second opinion, those who say that only supplication suffices with the examples that they had, we turn around and, and tell them that, but my friend, does supplication always work? That you say only supplications? They answer, they said, well, does medication always work? Medication also doesn't work all the time. If it's meant to work, it works both of them. It's not meant, none of them would work. How often you see that the doctors, they prescribe a medication for two patients, works with one, doesn't work with another one. The best surgeon often makes a mistake, okay, and doesn't work for them. That's why they use usually dentist uh, surgeons, they give you a paper to sign disclaiming so that there is no liability if something goes wrong. Because possibility of going wrong, if something goes wrong is always there. The same, so it's not that medication always works. Supplication shouldn't, uh, don't expect it to work all the time, number one. Number two, they say, as a matter of fact, it always works. Call me and I grant you. It doesn't have any exception. God didn't say, accept, conditions apply. But working for supplication, the meaning of working supplication is not how you and I understand it. They say, supplications always work. Either you will be cured if it's meant to be, and if it's God's, within God's will, it works. And if it's not God's will to work, still you supplicate because you don't know whether it's going to work or not. As you take the medication, because you don't know whether it's going to work for you or not. But if it's, the God, will, if it's the will of God that it doesn't work, never mind. The Almighty God will compensate you in a different way, either in dunya or in the hereafter. Therefore, supplication does the job for you. You don't miss out on the supplication. Second question, I'm trying to be a, a devil advocate now against this uh, issue of the supplication only. The second question they raised, uh, those against them, they say that, well, if that's the case, then how come that some, yes, okay, we agree, it's not that medication always works, but surely it sometimes works. How come that medication often works for even atheists? who don't believe in any supplication, uh, uh, invocation, they don't believe in God to start with, let alone supplicating to God. And still you see that they get cured, as, uh, as I told you that. Now, from here I want to come to the third one, and the answer is that, my friend, the, uh, the best answer, inshallah, from the Qur'an, the Ruwayat, the practice of Ma'asumin salam and our eminent scholars have been following this in their literatures is that you need both medication and supplication but don't think that medications and supplications they work independent from God who has given the power of medication to that herb to that medicine other than the Almighty God so from the monotheistic perspective both medication and supplications and all the means provided to us, these are manifestations of God's might and mercy. It's God's might and mercy that uh, manifests itself through certain medication to be discovered. With time, inshallah, this uh, COVID-19 medication will be discovered as well. It's there already. Man has not discovered it yet. As the medication vaccination for plague was there already, man of the ancient time had not discovered it yet, and many other such things. So it's not that medication works independent from God. In order for someone to become, to be categorically referred to as mushrik, is if somebody believes that something or someone in this universe works independent of God that person will be mushrik. Or along with God, that person will be mushrik. Tawheed means la mu'athira fil wujud illallah. There is no influential power in the universe other than the Almighty God. So it is the Almighty God who has provided this means, the means of supplication, the means of uh, medications and, and everything else. Plus, plus, why is it that the Almighty God has made or enabled this medication to work for this disbeliever, atheist, and doesn't work for another one because of the system that the Almighty God has made in this universe. Allah Akbar. There is an amazing ayah in Surah Al-Isra where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Man kana yuridu ajala ajalna lahu fiha ma nashau liman nurid. Allah Akbar. 
من کان یورید العاجله those who want just this دنیا health of this دنیا wealth of this دنیا pleasure of this دنیا the almighty God says that will grant, will grant them will give it to them but ma nasha leman nurid Allahu Akbar and still we, we grant it to them for who whatever that we will for whoever we will that means that yes I have made by based on the law of causality for this medication, for example, paracetamol to reduce the fever, but not necessarily. Still, the, the, uh, the what do you call it? The rate is in my hand. I have, I'm holding the bridle. I, I'm holding the string. Still, it's within my wisdom. I decide whether this works or doesn't work. That's why you see it's not that it's determined, definite. Okay, then Quran says that you know why believers and disbelievers have provided them facilities for both of them. Both this group and the other group, we have bestowed. No matter how Allah min ata Arabic bestowed upon them the, the bounties of your Lord, and no one is deprived of the mercy of God. When it rains, it rains to both believers and disbelievers. Couldn't God make the scenario of, or the system of the law of this world in such a way that whoever gets sick, unless they supplicate to God, take the medication? But the Almighty God could make it that this medication works, conditions apply. The, con the main condition for this medication, for this paracetamol to kill your fever is that on the condition you match it with praying to God and say, Ya Allah, and also say Allah, no any other name. Ya Allah, make a cure in this medication for me to be cured and then it would work. God could have made it like this, isn't it? This could be, your supplication could be one of the ingredients of this medication. Why is not like this all the time? Because the way that the Almighty God has said this word is Otherwise there wouldn't be any test. Otherwise it would be so easy. Otherwise no disbeliever in this world. That's why Quran says that often I provide so much to the, to the atheists and disbelievers. And God says, by the way, I'm concerned about you people's gullible, naive, faithful people who don't have enough insight. Otherwise, وَلَوْلَا أَنْ يَكُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبُيُوتِهِمْ سُقُفًا مِنْ فِضَّةً Had it not been, God says that, had it not been that I was concerned that the entire world, they become the community of disbelievers, no one would remain believers. I would have provided so much to atheists that they could build houses of gold and made of gold and silver. Silver, Quran says, the, the roofs of their houses was, were made of, of silver. Meaning that, but God keeps the balance so that I test, because I'm testing you to see who remains faithful, who wants God only for the cure of his son, his daughter, himself, and things like that. The difference, however, is وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَالَهَا سَعْيَهَا Or answers in Surah Al-Baqarah, there are people only want dunya, we give it to them. They want health, wealth of dunya, we give it to them. But there are people who want the best of dunya and the best of akhir. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا اللَّهُ وَنَا The believers, the true believers are like this, that they say, Ya Allah, I want to be cured and I want my, my dear to be cured. I want the best of dunya and at the same time, I don't want to compromise my akhirah. Therefore, my supplication is a plan, my illness in fact. My, my sickness, my illness, this disease is a platform for all platform that you can use it to your advantage to make you closer to God. Whether you are cured physically or not, if you take advantage of that, that platform can bring us closer to God. COVID-19 is an opportunity for the world to become closer to God, to become better human beings if they take advantage of it. If they don't, that becomes another experience over millions of experiences that the previous generations have, have made. This is one. Second, remember that supplication 
it's always healthy to keep to make it attached to the medications because as we said it and it's a fact it's not that medication always work so what your supplication can do is to protect you for unexpected mistakes that a doctor a surgeon a dentist could do another that you do can pro protect that because rubbama kana dawa unda'an Huh? Uh, often that a medication becomes a poison and works opposite. Chon qaza ayat, tabib ablah shabad, Rumi says. If it says sometimes the will of God is not for this patient, for God, God knows best to be cured. Because when God says that for whoever we will, the will of God is encompassed by his wisdom. God's wisdom, God knows best. Maybe this person doesn't have to be re recovered no matter what. But the, and a mistake happens. Through the law of causality, again, a mistake happens and the, the medication, the surgery doesn't work. So what the supplication does protects us against those mistakes, inshallah. Let me mention to you one quick example, even though I don't want to keep you long. But the, these examples I'm telling you are very close to home examples. But for obvious reasons, I cannot mention the names of, of people. A young lady in Sydney, she was in labor, all right? And... Uh, the, the situation was a little bit complicated and the doctor, the, the gynecologist apparently had told them that our recommendation is to not to wait and do the caesarean, remove the baby. The second option that you have, which is not our recommendation, is to wait a bit longer to see if the baby turns. The baby apparently hasn't turned. Now the father of the, uh, the boy to be born calls me and says, Sheikh, Sheikh Mansour, can you do istikhara for me? Now put yourself in my shoes, Allahu Akbar. This is the khara, astaghfirullah, that I say this possibly, hypothetically speaking. This is the khara can save a life or can take a life of that baby. Ya Allah, they want to do istikhara, they decided to do istikhara in this situation. Even though doctor's recommendation is cesarean, but they chose to do istikhara and ask the Almighty God. Ya Allah, Ya Dalil al mutahayyirin I open the Quran. And I called the guy and I said that don't do caesarean wait, inshallah, the baby will be delivered naturally based on the Quran. It's not my word. Alhamdulillah, the baby was born normal, natural, and uh, with no problem whatsoever. See, a doctor could, and there are situations that doctors, surgeons could make a mistake, supplications protect such, such mistakes. Long story short, the benefit and the reason that we do need supplications along with medication is that remember in a nutshell the recommendation of the quran is that when it comes to honey as a physical substance and at the same time quran says so together you need medication and you need supplication both of them together work best not only to cure your body if it's meant to cure, also to cure and elevate and to, to uplift your soul as well. It will not only benefit you in dunya, it will benefit you in your eternity in, in paradise, inshallah, in akhir as well. That is the lifestyle of Ahlul Bayt al -Musalam, and that has been the practice of our great scholars. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.